Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video I'm going to talk to you about drag and the influence your riding position has on drag. Now riding position and the rider themselves attributes approximately 70% of the total drag that a bicycle uh, or the cyclist experiences as they are traveling along. So you can get the biggest bang for your buck by adjusting your position on the bike. Now if you're a seasoned cyclist I'm probably not going to tell you anything you don't already know, but the analysis behind it, you may have seen somewhere else, you probably won't have. So please bear with me and we'll carry on with drag. So for drag to occur, you need three things. You need an object, you need a fluid to go through, and a speed to travel at. If I go through those in turn, uh, the fluid to uh, travel through, in our case, is air. It is nominally 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. So that means if you took a cube that was one meter by one meter by one meter, its weight will be 1.2 kilograms. And the reason I say nominally is because the density of air varies across the planet. If you are somewhere hot and humid, the air density will be less than somewhere that is very, very dry and very, very cold. The next thing is velocity. Now, velocity is, uh, well, it, it causes drag in the sense that the faster you go, the more drag you create, but it's not a linear relationship, it is a squared relationship. So if you go from, let's say, 10 kilometers per hour to 20 kilometers per hour, i.e. a speed differential of two times, your drag force would actually go up by four times because it's speed squared. The final one, and the one you can really influence as a rider, is CD, or the type of object that is uh, going through the working fluid. CD is drag coefficient and CDA is drag coefficient times area. Now I've kind of simplified that because CD in itself is made up of two parameters. One is called skin friction drag and the other is called pressure drag. Skin friction drag only contributes a small amount to the total drag force and skin friction itself is the energy transfer between the object traveling through the fluid and the working fluid. So if I'm going through the air, what's happening is Energy from me is going from my body to the air molecules and that uh, air moving over me is actually causing friction which causes the air to heat up. Pressure drag is caused by the movement of air and the, tr the equalization of air pressure around an object. So air always tries to find this equilibrium where the pressure is uniform. At atmospheric sea level, it's nominally 1.01 .01 bar or about 14 and a half pounds per square inch if you're in the US. Uh, and when you're going through, uh, you know, when you're riding a bike through air, air is moving around you, its velocity is changing and that causes a difference in pressure. It tries to equalize itself and you get something called pressure drag. Pressure drag typically causes vortices and vortices will slow you down. So I like to have practical examples in my videos and there's probably no more practical, uh, more of a practical example than this, which is my bike. Um, this is how I ride it. Now I am, uh, I guess, anatomically a bit of a, an oddball because I have got quite long legs and a comparatively short upper body. So I have to have my seat uh, quite high. And at the same time, I've got my handlebars fairly close. Admittedly, that is of 110 mil stem. Now, one of the things that uh, has to happen when you ride a bike is you need to be comfortable. There is no point having a ridiculously aerodynamic position if you can't stay in it. So you need to find the, the balance between getting in a, an aerodynamic position and also actually being able to pedal and produce decent power in that position. So this is my typical riding position when I'm riding along fairly comfortably. Now let's look at where I'm generating drag from as a rider and as the wind is coming towards me, the first thing the wind's gonna hit are my hands. What can I do about them? Not very much. Next thing is forearms. So again, this is almost like modeling like a cylinder. I'm gonna generate drag from here, uh, my upper arms and also my head. Now my head's a bit of an oddball because um, there's nothing actually behind it. It's just the thing that's sticking out. So if I were to reduce the height of my head, bring it in line, I guess, with my shoulders, then all of a sudden I would reduce the drag. The next thing is the chest. Now the chest is, a, again, an unfavorable place for drag to uh, occur because air is coming along and it's effectively getting channeled into my chest, uh, getting compressed, and then it's going around. 
when air goes around my body, it's actually detaching. So what detaching means is the air can no longer stick to my body and it creates a vortex behind me. That's quite apparent around this area here. So around my back, uh, off the back of my head, and also around my legs. One of the important concepts to get your head round is what's known as the spike effect, spear effect, or some aerodynamicists call it the conical effect. If we have an object that's going into the wind, i.e. coming towards the camera, uh, this is probably about 30 mil in diameter. The effect it has on the air is what's called a, a spear effect. So this spikes the air and the influence it has comes out in a sort of cone around it. So anything in this coronal area is experiencing reduced free stream velocity or reduced air velocity. And you can see that in a bike. Now on the bike, the front wheel causes, or is the spike, and the spike creates a cone that goes upwards that way and left to right outwards. So you've basically got half a cone going around you. If you put an object in that area, you will reduce the drag that that object experiences because the air, let's say it's coming towards you at 40 kilometers per hour, in that conical area, the air may only be moving at 33 kilometers per hour or 30 kilometers per hour, it's reduced. You experience the same thing when you are in the, in the back of uh, an object traveling fast. So if you're drafting someone or drafting a tractor, drafting a truck, whatever it is, when you get closer to that object, the drag that you experience reduces. As you come further out, that drag increases. On the edge of the cone, and that is typically where you um, experience uh, problems when a big truck goes past. When you're on the edge of the cone, you are in a transitional area and it's buffeting. So you're between an area of free stream velocity and reduced velocity, and that makes the bike unstable. When you're on the bike, what you want to go for in terms of an aerodynamic position is a long, slender and narrow position. So in terms of the rider, what you want to do is get your hands together, get your shoulders scrunched in and uh, be as um, streamlined as you can. In terms of the geometry on the bike, some things you can do to do change this are you can change handlebars, make them as narrow as you can get away with. These ones are particularly narrow, but then again, I'm not riding these ones particularly fast. Also, riding in the drops. When you ride in the drops, you are reducing your frontal area uh, and also having some uh, positive effects on the pressure drag coefficient. Another thing is um, to get yourself in the spike. Now, Chris Froome famously did this in the 2016 Tour de France. He put his chin basically on top of the handlebars. By putting his chin on top of the handlebars, the spike generated by the front wheel went around him and he was experiencing less drag. Now when you get back here, there is not really that much you can do in terms of drag. For the seat position, that's really defined by your geometry and what you feel comfortable with. But generally speaking, a long, slender position is the one to go for. One thing that can affect drag is crank length. Now, crank length, the longer the cranks are, the reduction in drag you will have, so you will have less drag. And the reason for that is a longer crank length will result in more of a bend in your leg. So if you result, have a, more of a bend in your leg, you're exposing less of your leg to the air. Some people are going to argue whether that is um, a measurable difference or not, and the truth is I don't know and I suspect it will vary depending on the individual rider and there's no uniform you know, guaranteed this is the crank length to go for. Clothing, well clothing is totally straightforward. If you have clothing that is loose, you will generate drag and there is no two words about it. You want to have tight fitting clothing that goes all the way around you, don't have anything that flaps because that increases skin friction drag. We've been on the bike in my garage trying to explain some of the practical aspects of uh, rider aerodynamics. Now I'm going to show you what the actual wind turbulence and disturbance around a rider is like. So what we've got is we've got SolidWorks here and I've created a model of this, uh, well it's a human replica. It's not exactly a perfect replica of a human but it'll do for this example. I've also removed the bike um, because basically I couldn't be bothered to draw it. In this example, we've got air coming from right to left 
and uh, what I've done is I've done a CFD analysis on it to show you where the drag is. Um, blue is uh, free stream velocity or just normal and red is bad. So what we can do is we can take slices through the body. So I'm looking at a, above his head and the slice is miles away from his head. But you can see we've got this blue, paler blue, so we're starting to have an effect and that is the spike effect from the rider. We just better hit save. When we carry on going, we're getting closer to the rider, and this spike effect is becoming more and more apparent. Right now, we are in the zone which is almost touching the rider's upper arm, and all of a sudden, we've generated all of this drag, uh, and that is an interaction between the rider's shoulder and his back and that's generated quite a lot of drag and a huge wake. Uh, aerodynamically the way we define these things is by a, a sort of relative length so if we pick the femur length you could argue that one two three four five six carry on five femur lengths worth of drag or turbulence is experienced um, before the free stream velocity sort of gets back to normal. In, in effect, in this case, the free stream velocity doesn't actually ever get back to normal. It's off the side of my analysis. So anyway, we'll carry on with the cut. And okay, so we've cut through his arm now. And a few noticeable things. You've got the drag generated by his back. Lower back, again, look at all that drag there, all that turbulence, all that vorticity and also the effect from his leg. So you can see that um, the leg is generating quite a bit of drag, which is not usually considered. Then we get to his head. Now, on his head, you can see this area behind the rider's head and just to the top of the, the back, really. Again, a load of turbulence in there. That's not great. Uh, let's carry on going, obviously it's a symmetrical model. This is basically through the centre of his body. So you can see that we've got uh, the cut line through the centre and all this drag that's generated in the crotch area off the back of his head and uh, going backwards. Um, carry on going and again you can see the, the drag caused by his arms and leaving like that. So that is the what I would call a relaxed position. So I've done another model which is the sort of more like a TT-esque position. So let's try this one and start off in the same plane. So over here, so we're, we're counted over quite, quite a lot more. Um, and again there is an effect you can see over here from this rider, but the wake is much further back. Uh, I didn't say document, sorry. Um, but let's start the cut process. So we're cutting along, and now we've gone through the rider's arm. As soon as you go through the rider's arm, you can see this drag generated by his shoulder uh, and also by his upper arm. Um, but as we carry on going, that is through his body and look at the difference in his back so we've got well a bit of drag generated by the top of his head and um, hardly anything off the top of him and that's because the drag coefficient of this shape is significantly more efficient and that's what you want to aim for so if we go back to the other one uh, let's just do let's carry on going look at the amount of drag that his back is generating and that's significant versus the sort of tucked over TT type position where it's significantly more aerodynamic, significantly more aerodynamic. Um, with the cutting, again, there's the drag generated by his head, drag generated by his leg. Cut line still generated by his head. And this is another good example of the, the cone effect so his head is here we've made the cut 
slightly to the left of it as you can see by this grey area but this drag or this turbulence is to the left or to the right of the rider so overall you can quite clearly see the difference in drag when you look at it in terms of CFD so this upright more relaxed position has way way more drag vortices and all that kind of good stuff than this position which is the canted over TT-esque position so to summarize in this video if you want to reduce your drag the things you need to do you need to get your head down and you need to worry about the uh, gap between your head and the sort of small uh, section just at the top of your back where there's an arch reducing that has a measurable effect on drag next one is the handlebars you want to get them as low as you can uh, and as narrow as possible shoulders generate quite a lot of drag tuck those in pedals now whether the pedals and the crank length associated with them has an effect that is more or less than your comfortable pedaling crank length is debatable and only you can really decide that but aerodynamically speaking a longer crank length will have less drag and that's the end of this video on rider aerodynamics i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button uh, please subscribe to my channel for more content uh, and also check out my website hambini.com and um, thank you very much for watching and until next time